After several weeks of detailed calculation of integrals, I finally get to move on to various applications. The first of these is parametric curves. I talked about algebraic plane curves earlier in the course. These were loci defined by polynomial equations. Parametric curves are another type of curve. Like plane curves, they are a one-dimensional curved shape. However, a parametric curve has more information than a normal plane curve. A parametric curve cares about speed and direction in addition to the shape. It's not just what the curve looks like, but how movement along the curve happens. This is important since it opens up a bunch of applications. Parametric curves are essentially a record of motion, where an object is at various points in time, how it is moving, how it is curving, and so on. And this is very valuable. Understanding motion of objects is one of the most important applications of mathematics, and these motions are very often expressed as parametric curves. So let me get to the definition. A parametric curve starts, unsurprisingly, with a parameter. Usually this is t for time, and the parameter has a range from a to b. These are the time values for motion along the curve. Then there are two functions, x of t and y of t. These are the two coordinates depending on time. x of t is where the x-coordinate is at a moment in time, and likewise y of t is where the y-coordinate is. Then these are put together into a curve. The standard letter for curves is gamma, so gamma of t is the curve composed of the two coordinates, x of t and y of t. And let me use an example to show how the curve is drawn. Here is the curve gamma of t equals tt, and the range is from t from 0 to 5 seconds. At t equals 0, the curve starts at 0, 0, and then after 1 second, the curve is at 1, 1, after 2 seconds, the curve is at 2, 2, after 3, 4, and 5, so on. Since the time range stops after 5 seconds, so does the curve. The graph of the curve is drawn with an arrow to indicate the direction of motion. The axes are still x and y. There is no time axis. Time is just movement along the curve. One major difference between plane curves and parametric curves is that, for parametric curves, the same shape can be expressed in many different ways, because there are many different rates of movement along the same shape. Here are three parametric curves. They all have equal x and y coordinates, so they all travel on the diagonal line as the example I showed before. They also all have the same start and end, 0, 0 to 5, 5 but they have different rates and directions of travel, different movements along the same shape. I'm going to go through some important examples. The first and perhaps most important is the circle. Since cosine is actually the x-coordinate of the circle, and sine is the y-coordinate, by the definition of the trig functions, it makes sense that they show up in the parametric curve. The time range is 0 to 2 pi, of course, to go around one rotation of the circle. The circle is an excellent basis for other parametric curves. By adjusting the circle, I can produce other periodic curves. This curve is the same as the circle, except there's a 3 inside the cosine and a 5 inside the sine. These numbers change the periods. The sine oscillates 3 times as fast as the circle, and the sine oscillates 5 times as fast. The result is this pattern of oscillations, where the x and y coordinates are going up and down or left and right at different speeds. The movement starts counterclockwise and then continues in this complicated shape. And here is another curve based on the circle. The sine and the cosine are here, but then I add 1 to the cosine and t to the sine. Adding to the sine makes the x-coordinate constantly increase. So instead of just going around in a circle, this now moves in the positive x direction. As it does, it produces this arc. This is called the cycloid. And the parameter a, a here is the radius of the circle that it is based on. One major adjustment to the circle is adding the same function in front of each. This changes the radius of the circle. If f is an increasing or decreasing function, then the radius will either be increasing or decreasing, and the resulting shape will be a spiral. This is the Archimedean spiral. The function in front of sine and cosine is just t. This is a linearly increasing radius. As the curve goes around the circle, the radius grows at a steady rate. The arms of the spiral are equally spaced to show that steady rate of increase. The path of the curve is going around the spiral counterclockwise, further and further outwards. This is another spiral, and the function here in front of sine and cos is 1 over t, which is decreasing. 
So therefore, as t increases, this radius will get closer and closer to zero, and the result is an inward spiral. It will still loop forever, but the loops will get smaller and smaller. The path along the spiral is inward. If the function in front of the sine and cosine is exponential, the resulting spiral is called the logarithmic spiral. The radius increases exponentially. Instead of the evenly spaced arms of the Archimedean spiral, these spiral arms get farther and par farther apart very quickly. And again, the path along the curve is counterclockwise outward. Finally, here is another complicated curve based a little bit on the circle. This is called the cardioid, since it resembles a heart. It has this cosine and sine of the circle, but the radius is changed by 1 minus sine t. And this makes the radius small above the x-axis and larger below. The path around the curve is still counterclockwise. Hopefully these examples give you some idea of the kind of shapes that can result from the definition of a parametric curve.